Friends, I hope this finds you well. Uh, good to see you this morning. Um, I think I have a problem. We might not be doing devotions outside as much anymore. It seems like the mosquitoes have arrived. And they love me. They just do everything they can to get little bits of my blood for their lives. Let's say they're devoted. I'm going to read today from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Um, chapter 3. Uh, one of my favorite passages talks about how much Paul has achieved. And Paul was not a slacker. I mean, Paul did a great deal. And it talks about that. But then it talks about Paul's goal now. I won't go through the first part of the chapter that talks about how Hebrew he was and how righteous he was and how much he was the right person. But I'll start with what he addresses with that. Beginning with verse 7. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. The thing about Paul is, he was the first Christian like us. All the disciples and the followers from those first days, they knew Jesus. Paul was the first one we have recorded who didn't know who Jesus was, and yet he wrote a good chunk of the New Testament. He had a spirit-filled life like us. He had to depend on the God he could not see. He had a vision of Christ, but then he had to live every day just like we do. Sometimes you pray and it seems like your prayers aren't going anywhere. Sometimes you do your best and it seems like everything out to get you. Sometimes you just seem to fall into greatness or fall into terrible stuff. That's what Paul knew. He didn't walk beside Jesus in Galilee. He didn't hear Jesus say what Jesus said. He had to learn from the apostles from what would become our scripture. And so his faith, like us, probably had its ups and downs. But he wanted to know Christ. If we want to succeed at life, we have to be devoted. I've told you about the 10,000 hour rule. If we want to succeed, we have to be devoted to the thing we want to succeed at. Well, if you want to succeed as a Christian, and in fact in living life, you need to be devoted to Christ. I want to know Christ above all else. Let me pray for you if I could. And so, Lord, we face another day needing your love and your help and your support. And we ask that you would help us to stay close to you. Help us to be devoted to your ways and your paths. Help us to live your life in this world. For we ask it in the name of the one who gave his life for us. Amen. God bless you. Guys, at 1230, we're meeting at Grits and Greens. We'd love to have you join us. Everybody have a wonderful day. Tomorrow night, if you would like to be part of the prayer meeting service at 7 at the church, please let me know so we can make sure we have socially distant space for everybody. Have a great day.